How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Staying Focused with Jesus. In this message, we will speak to the ladies. Whether you are saved or you're just coming across this video and you are not saved. My women, I love y'all. I really do. And I wish the best for each and every one of you in Christ. I wish for you to have the best husband, best children, best life. I wish for your needs to be satisfied both spiritually and physically. I wish for you to live in the nice houses and to drive nice cars and wear the nice clothing and jewelry and smell good stuff. And all these things are available in Christ. And there will come a time in the future where you will enjoy these things. You will enjoy these things. Excuse me. But that's not the reason why you should be seeking Christ. You should be seeking Christ because of who he is. Because of his love, because of his goodness. And if you're not going to seek Christ, God is a just God. And what a person reaps, they sow. If you've sown to the flesh, then you will reap. So we want to go over some things that are contained in the scriptures. Now, these scriptures do apply to women mostly. But it doesn't mean that if you are a man watching this video that you can't get something from it. Because it does affect you too. If you choose to. Um, I allow it to affect you and you go through this time period that is coming up. So in the book of Isaiah chapter 4 verse number 1 it reads and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach so let's break this down let's digest the word of god let's chew it let's see what the flavor is so it says first and in that day so that day is a reference to the time of Jacob's trouble. When you read the surrounding scriptures and you read the context, that day is in reference to what we call the time of Jacob's trouble. So in that day, in the day, in the day of uh, Jacob's trouble, seven women shall take hold of one man. Seven women taking hold of one man. I want you to stop and think about that for a second. I see and I meet a lot of women that complain that there aren't just any there just aren't any good men out here. Right? You've probably said it yourself. The Bible tells us none is good. I know what you're talking. I know what you're talking about when you say that. You're looking for a man of God. You want a man of God. And if there aren't good men to choose from, from a worldly perspective. 
that how much fewer are there true men of God in these last days to find you? Doesn't mean that God can't lead that man to you. So don't get discouraged and say, oh, oh no, this is not good. God can lead that man to you. But if it's bad right now, look how bad it's going to be. Seven women shall take hold of one man. You don't want to share? Like you're going to be sharing then. But again, this is your choice if you go through this time period. Then it continues on and says, saying, so the, the seven women are coming to this man and saying what? We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Usually what does a man do? He provides the food, bring home the bacon. These women are saying, we'll, get, we'll provide our own food, our own clothing. Only let us be called by thy name. Hey. What's it talking about when it's speaking in reference to being called by somebody's name? What they're saying is we will provide our own food, our own clothing. We will provide everything. Just let us be under your protection. Just like we are called by the name of Christ. We are under his wing of protection. His protection in the name of Jesus. So these women, they want to be called by this man's name so they can have some type of dignity, some type of, of uh, respect because they're not going to be respected anymore. When God made Adam and then he made Eve from Adam, from Adam's DNA. Adam had a respect for the woman in the role that she was meant to play. So when you get into stuff like the second and the, the excuse me, the first and second laws of thermo, thermodynamics, you start to see how it plays out in regards to the Bible and things Pretty much, they gradually, it break down. They wear out. The state of man has gradually broken down and wore out from the time of Adam, Adam and Eve up until now. So the respect that Adam had and the love that Adam had for his wife, that general love, that godly love, has gradually wore out and decreased. So therefore, in 2017, what do you see? Men overall don't have a respect for women. And there's so much confusion. Women don't even respect the position that God has given them and the things that they, uh, you know, they do as a woman that man can't do. Every person is supposed to be respected in their own right because they are made in the image of God. And then it says to take away our reproach. So you can imagine this conversation because why would they go? Why would the seven women go to this man and tell him this? Say, hey, you don't have to give us food. You don't have to give us apparel. Just let's be called by your name. Because think about the conversation wise. If they're saying this to him, what would be his response back? Or what would be, what would have been his response for them to say that. Or, you know, whoever's speaking first, you get the point. Or whoever's speaking second, just depends. This man don't have a lot himself. Remember the time period that it is in. It is in the day of the Lord. So now he got to take on seven women. He don't have a lot as it is. And then he probably doesn't want to deal with the mess that they are bringing along. Their reproach. 
So they're con they're trying to convince him. He's like, you know, I don't have a lot of bread. You know, I don't have a lot of clothing. You know, I'm barely making it, making it as it is. Think about the the uh, TV shows, end of the world TV shows and the movies where they have little communities and stuff, and then you have a group of people they come there and they say, yeah, we want to be want to be under your protection or whatever. Kind of like that. So the man, he's not going to want to do it because he's not going to have a lot himself. But when we look up the word reproach, it means shame, infamy, disgrace, object of contempt, scorn, or derision, that which is the cause of shame or disgrace. So when we go back up and it says, only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach, to take away our shame, to take away our disgrace, to take away our scorn or derision. What man wants to deal with that? The scorn, the, the shame and disgrace of seven women. But he's probably going to do it because it's going to be so bad. And the women are going to have a choice. Now, I also want to mention this. This is in the book of Isaiah, right? Isaiah chapter 4, verse number 1. And it is referencing the women, or it's referencing specifically the women of Israel. Because remember, judgment, wrath, all these different things goes upon Israel first and then on the Gentiles. Just like the scriptures tell us, salvation to the um, Jew first and then to the Gentiles. So if God is allowing this to happen during this time period to Hebrew women, Physical Hebrew women, right? And we see how bad it's going to be so far. Then how much more worse is it going to be in regards to Gentile women of the flesh? So I'm addressing, I'm addressing right now both what we call black and white. We know that the Israelites, Israelite women would be a people of color according to the flesh. So if you are a Gentile, what we call white, and you're watching this video, and you are in Christ, if God is going to do this or allow this to his people, then what is he going to do to you and your people for your disobedience? It's not going to be pretty. Now, if you are a Gentile, female, according to the flesh, and you are in Christ, you have nothing to worry about. If you are a physical Jew and you are in Christ, you have nothing to worry about. But if you are a Jew, physical Jew, and you aren't in Christ, but you know a, a Gentile woman that is in Christ, guess what? She's better off than you. Because she dwells in the Messiah. She dwells in Christ and you dwell outside of him and you know better because the scriptures that you lay hold to they prophesied of Christ and you continue to reject him majority majority of you trying to keep the law and all these different things because you're falling after wicked men <laughs> so another thing I want to address is this the reason why seven women will lay hold to one man is because man himself is going to be scarce. There's not going to be a lot of men around. Isaiah chapter 13, verse number 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, 
even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Ophir. God is going to make a man more precious than fine gold. Think about that. If we have access to minerals now, right? But guess what? We don't have access to it. The people who are in the mining industry and the elite or whatever you want to call them that are running the shots, calling the shots and running the shots, <laughs> go that way, you know. They have access to fine gold, but we don't. So, how much more worse, worse is it going to be? Isaiah chapter 3, starting at verse number 16, going down to verse number 25. Moreover, the Lord saith, now he's speaking to Israelite women, according to the flesh. So again, if he's saying this to Israelite women, and you're going to see um, some things, which all women do this, but uh, women of color, really, Dealing with the weave and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it's in the scriptures. It's in the scriptures. Um, again, if God is saying this to physical Israelite women, then what is he going to do to Gentile women? What is he going to allow to happen to Gentile women? It's going to be bad all the way around if you're not in Christ. If you're not in this love. And when I read these scriptures, I'm like, Lord, Lord, and the stuff I see on Facebook with, with the women in their mouths are just so, so vile. They don't know what's about to hit them. And we're going to read some of the things that God, well, we read some of them, seven women going to let hold of one man. <laughs> Y'all already like, oh no, oh no, <laughs> I don't want that. But you're going to get it if you don't. Repent and believe the gospel. Let's continue reading. And see some of these other things that are going to be going on during this time. And you tell me if you want to be a part of it. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, I don't want to be a part of that. I already don't. But your life right now reflects contrary to the words that you speak because if you truly didn't want to be a part of this you would be humbling yourself before God right now asking him Lord Lord save me if you're not already saved and maybe you are saved I don't know Maybe you need to examine yourself, as we all do. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. So we know he's talking about physical Israelites. And walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. Stretched forth necks. Rolling the neck. You ain't can't tell you ain't can't tell me nothing. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Wanting eyes. I mean there's two ways you can look at that. Stretch forth neck, you know, to a look of pride. There's different perspectives you can um look at that from. But you get you get the point. Wanting eyes. You know, patting at the eyes and stuff. A wandering eyes and everything. Walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. So you get the, the context. Um, a lot of stuff that you see in all the cultures, they got it from the Bible. They got it from Israelites. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. So 
Daughters of Zion, they're going to pretty much be balding. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. He's going to expose the fornication that has been going on among Israelite women and also Gentile women. He's going to discover your secret parts. Not only the physical fornication, but the spiritual fornication. The things that you have been trying to hide. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. Look how he says the bravery. They put it on, they're brave. Like, yeah, because they're ornaments. The best way I can describe that, where you can understand, is you know how when you get a fresh cut, fresh haircut, Got some nice perfume, right? Got some brand new clothes. How do you feel? You feel good. You get a new outfit. You be fresh. You feel good. You feel brave. If you have a business, if you have a business meeting and you got a fly woman suit or whatever, you know, so you got a nice skirt. Some nice shoes and stuff. Nice uh, jacket or blouse or you know whatever with nice little jewelry and stuff. You got you got it together. You got your presentation together, right? You feel brave that you can go in and tackle whatever task is at hand. Think about it. So the Lord says he's gonna take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. So you pretty much he's gonna take away the jewelry and stuff. The jury that gives you that confidence, or whatever it may be, doesn't doesn't um, necessarily have to be jury. So I'm, I'm being generic, just so that you can understand what God is is saying and the point that He wants to be driven home. And their calls, and their round tires, like the moon. Um, I forgot what the round tires are. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I looked it up before, but I forgot. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, all that's dealing with accessories pretty much. The round, the round tires, like the moon, it deals with um, ex bodily accessories that women put on. This is just what it was called back in the day and some of the stuff is still called that. But um, some of the stuff is called other stuff. Um, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, nose jewels, that's nothing new. The changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. Um, when you look in the mantles, it's dealing with something that goes over the head. So it's talking about hats, but it also goes into the weave and everything. And it shall come to pass. And you have both black women and white women that wear that. Well, you may be saying, well, I don't wear weave. I don't wear none of that stuff. Yeah, but you, if you are in Christ, Christ still going to pour his wrath upon you. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Why? Because it's going to be so bad. You're not, you're not going to have the amenities like you have now. Unless you're going to roll with the system. And even if you do, <laughs> God can still make it bad. Which we see how bad it is in the book of Revelation. But he's going in... A little bit of detail here. So you're not going to be smelling sweet. You know, I'll be in a, I'm in a, you know, I will be in a bank somewhere or something. And, you know, one will be in line. 
I may not see her, but I can smell her and I turn around. Oh, that smells, smells good. That sweet smell attracts me. Not in the sense of attracting me where I want to talk to her, but just the smell in general. Just the same way if you're in a, um, a um, grocery store, you know, sometimes they, they cook food in the store. The Publix does that. The aroma draws you before you even see what they're cooking because it smells good. So that aroma attracts you. Just because you get, just because you are attracted from the aroma, when you get there, you may not want what they have. So I want to clarify that because I don't want nobody saying, oh, he's attracted to other women. <laughs> Let's not get it twisted. Um, and instead of a girdle, a girdle, a rent. And instead of well set hair, baldness. So you got that hair laid with that fresh perm. Some of y'all go natural. My wife, she does natural, whatever. Um, she got a lot of hair. Her hair is thick, <laughs> thick. Um, you got you got your hair laid. You got your perm. You got your weave, whatever. Oh, you are gonna be bald. Both Jew and Gentile. To the Jew first, the female Jew, and then to the female Gentile. So it's gonna be bad all the way around for any women that continue to reject Christ. You got a nice hair? I see y'all. Hey, she got some nice hair. Nice hair is nice hair. <laughs> Rather it's a black person or a white person. You're gonna be bald. And you're gonna have that long hair flowing on your back. It just, oh my gosh. Uh, oh, what is it? What? Uh, uh. Y'all seen the movies? And instead, of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. You know, the girdles and everything, the um, waist trims and stuff, that ain't nothing new. It ain't nothing new. Why? Because it gives you that figure. It gives you that figure. There's nothing wrong with these things to a certain extent. When you start to do these things or whatever, and, um, you know, they become idolatry, you got some problems. So I told you that the Bible even says there's nothing new under the sun. But a lot of this stuff, it's in modern day society. It's just called something else. Um, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. Sackcloth is a representation of mourning. And burning instead of beauty. You just, you're going to be you're going to be ugly. You you are literally going to be ugly. You're not going to have the eyelashes and the eyeliner and the makeup to put on anymore. anymore. You're going to be ugly. You're not going to be able to bathe like you, like you used to. Your hair going to be falling out. And you know what the Bible says about a woman's hair is her glory. You're literally going to be ugly. I'm not saying to, to pick at you. I'm saying is I'm telling you this so you can be warned of the things that are to come. So if you do, well, I'm good. I'm saved. I'm saved. And you continue on and you're in this time period. I warned you. And if you are truly saved, then why aren't you speaking the message to other women and let them know these things? Why aren't you studying these things out for yourself so you can warn other women? And give them the gospel and give them the truth. So they don't have to go through it. Second commandment that Jesus gave us to keep. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. God is giving you opportunities if you're not taking them. To tell women these things. Like, girl, you think it's bad? Now it's hot. Let me show you. Let me show you something. Or share this video. <laughs> Doesn't take nothing to... Share a video with somebody and say, hey girl, check this out. You got to see this. This is serious stuff. Then it says this. On top of all that. Thy men shall fall by the sword. It says, thy men. So you got a loved one. You got a, you got a man that you love, right? You're going to see him die. Right in front of your eyes. 
Then you got to go through what you're going through. On top of that. Thy men speaking to you. Those who are going to go through this time period. Thy men shall fall by the sword. And thy mighty in the war. You know how you got them so my My man a soldier. Talking about the men that are literary soldiers and stuff. Not soldiers of Christ. You know you see these big burly marine dudes or whatever. And they... Mighty man, you be like, man, that's that's a strong, that's a strong dude. Oh, that's a that's a big dude. You know, that's what we say. <laughs> that's what us men say. That's a big dude. <laughs> I mean, people say that about me, but I had to look at other dudes. Sometimes I'd be like, man, that's a big dude. <laughs> um. So yeah, your men, these strong men, these mighty, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fall by the sword in war. They're not gonna be mighty. God's gonna show you that they're not mighty. Meaning that you have put your faith in these in these men instead of putting your faith in Christ. Now, if your man is saved, follow your man as he follows Christ. Because he's going to take you places that you ain't never been before. Why? Because God is going to take him to places that he's never been. With wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, ultimately love. My wife can testify to that. So now we want to go to Isaiah chapter 13, starting at verse number nine. And now we're going to go in more detail. So bear yourself. Isaiah chapter 13, verse number nine. And if you are a man watching this video, you can get something from it too, because some things are going to happen to you. And then some things are going to happen to your women if you go through this time period. We're going to read this. Let me let me add this. The things that we are reading so far, a person would not want to go through and they would not want to um, see their wife go through it either. I don't want to see my wife's hair fall out. So, oh, just clumps of hair falling out. Who, who wants to see that? And I say that because people say, "Oh, you believe you, you believe in the the catching away. You believe in the, in, the, in the rapture, so you're you're fearful of death and you're fearful of all these different things." No, I'm not fearful. Of, we're not fearful of of death. We're already dead. But who in their right mind? We don't want to deal with the world now and the evil and wickedness that's going on. So why in the world would we want to see our loved ones' hair fall out while our loved ones murdered? Why would we want to see our children die? I mean, not just die, but slaughtered. It doesn't make any sense. We're seeking God's mercy, not God's wrath. And the catching away is God's mercy. It is a reward for those who are watching and waiting. Truly watching and waiting. Meaning doing the will of God, not just sitting around on your butt doing nothing. But let's read this. Make sure you pay attention. Class is in session. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger. Stop right there. The Bible clearly tells us in the book of Thessalonians that God has not appointed us to wrath. We are not appointed to the day of the Lord. It's not for us. It's for the wicked. I've covered that so many times. I got so many sermons on that. It's, I ain't going to say it's ridiculous, but it's, it's awesome in, in Christ because he has allowed me to put those videos out. And he has given me that wisdom. I love to receive wisdom and understanding. I love to share. So again, the day of the Lord cometh cruel. So it's a day of cruelty, both with wrath and fierce anger. Who wants to go through that? Who wants to go through the wrath of God? To lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. That's what the day of the Lord is for. It's for the sinners. Are you a sinner? You remember saying, yeah, I'm a sinner. 
You're not. If you're born again, you're not a sinner anymore. That's your, that's your old man. Your old man, your old woman is a sinner. Yeah, the Bible does say that he who said they have no sin is a liar. But there's another script that says that he who was born of God or he who was of God doesn't sin. So what do you do with that? One is talking about the spiritual man born again in Christ, the new man or new woman. And the other one is talking about the physical man, the dead man, the old man or the old woman. Your flesh. If you're born again, the new you is not a sinner. For the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light. So right there you have the Revelation 6 seal. It's the same thing that's said in the book of Matthew chapter 24. We've covered that before too. It's the same thing. So show, that shows you that Matthew 24 is mostly dealing with the time of Jacob's trouble. And yes, there is a rapture or catching away in that time period, the time of Jacob's trouble. There are multiple raptures. There are multiple catching aways. And I've covered that. I think um, I may have made one or two videos on that. Everybody talk about, oh, there's only one, there's only one, there's only one. There's, there's more than one. Um, it says, The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Revelation chapter 6, the sixth seal, is Jesus going forth. You say, oh, it's the second coming. No, it's not. The second coming is multiple events. It's like you have a movie. You have the title of the movie, right? But the title of the movie has different events in it. But you have a title of the movie that speaks about all the events. The second coming is the title of the movie. And inside of the second coming, you have multiple, multiple events that make up the whole thing of what we call the second coming. Just like the first coming of Christ was multiple events. Christ didn't just come one time when he came the first time. Melchizedek, <laughs> that was Christ. Abraham, when he when, when uh, the um the angel of the Lord and the two men met with Abraham, the angel of the Lord, that was Christ. The pillar of uh, fire by night, I think it says, fire by night and um, the cloud by day, that was Christ. <laughs> Don't be confused by these things and don't be confused by people trying to confuse you. There are multiple comings of Christ. First time was multiple comings. Second time, multiple comings. We know that God does things in patterns. So let's read that one more time. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. The moon, I'm going to give you all a um, little nugget. The moon is a representation of the body of Christ. And the moon is not causing her light to shine because the moon ain't preaching the gospel. Because the moon has come back to wage war with Christ. Meaning the church, the body has come back to wage war with Christ. I want to put that nugget in your mind because when we do the Revelation 12 sermon, I still got it. I still got it. I'm um, still working on it. I'm going to show you some things that are just awesome. I didn't even know this until I started digging deep into it and God started revealing some things to me. And y'all know I love to share. I love to share wisdom. You know, I love to share different things that God has shown me because it may, you know, it may help you on your walk. Or you may be like, oh man, oh you know, oh God, that's 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 cool. But y'all want to give y'all that nugget. The moon ain't giving no light because the moon ain't giving the gospel. The moon has come to wage war with Christ. The moon being a representation doesn't mean that we are literally the moon. 
but the moon being a representation of the body of Christ. Because the moon does not reflect its own light. The moon reflects the light of the sun. The scripture in the Bible, is, it calls Jesus the son of righteousness. S-U-N, not S-O-N. The stuff in the heavens is a representation. The gospel is everywhere. I keep on telling y'all this. So hopefully y'all can, can get it. That way nobody is with, has any excuse. So if a person is in astronomy or astrology, you know, God will, God will work through that and show them the gospel. You can see the gospel in food. That's a whole different summary right there. Just in the way that God created the different fruits and vegetables. Um, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their inequity. I thought we have I thought we have been cleansed and washed from our inequities. We have been. If we are in Christ, so this time period is not for us. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. You can't even come to Christ. You can't even be saved if you're arrogant. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. What do you say about the haughty women? Proud. Proud women. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. We read the scripture earlier. Even a man than a golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste row. Let me start right here. Because now he's going to go into even deeper detail of how bad it's going to be. And it shall be as the chaste row and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people. It's already being set up. What are people doing? They're clicking up with their kind. They're clicking up with their tribe. That's how God group people, tribes. That's why you see blacks going with blacks. Uh, whites going with whites. Africans going with Africans, you know, the whole comedic movement and stuff. They're, they're going back to their tribes and don't even realize that they're fulfilling Bible prophecy. But you're different groups and stuff. And when people are speaking, it speaks to them like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling that. On a, on a spiritual level and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. It's, it's, already, it got, it's already in motion. The wheels are already turning. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. So what is God saying? You better run and hide in this, during this time period. If you found, you're going to get it. He didn't just say murdered. He said dashed to pieces. He used some words, some choice words to drive home the point of how bad it's going to be. Pretty much telling you that this is what you wanted. You didn't want my love. You didn't want my mercy. You didn't want my grace. So this, I'm giving you what you wanted. You didn't want to be free from your sin. You didn't want to be free from, from wickedness. You didn't want to be free from bad decision making. You didn't want to be free from keep on chasing up the men and choosing the wrong men. You enjoyed it. You put on the show of that you didn't, you not like you didn't enjoy it, but you enjoyed it. Because if you, if you didn't, then you wouldn't want no, want no part of it. You wouldn't want to continue in that. Continually making bad decisions and talking to men that you know are no good for you. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces, pieces before their eyes. Who, who, who wants to deal with that? I don't, I got an eight month old son. Do I want to see my son dash to pieces? Absolutely not. 
Now, somebody had bust up in the house or whatever. We're here to get you. I'm going to give my family a fighting chance. I'll go for Christ. Y'all get out of here. Why? So they can get, so they can go and continue to preach the gospel. Now, if I'm in a situation where, you know, that, that gets into like self-defense and stuff. Um, I'm not even going to go there because that's a whole different sermon. But you can protect your family. But if you're going to die for the sake of Christ, when you're in a situation where, you know, you really don't have a choice, then you need to die for your faith. But if you can get out of there, get out of there, get out of uh, a trouble, then you get out of out of trouble. Just don't let nobody kill you because if you're dead, then guess what? You can't preach the gospel. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean that you go out here and do all this crazy stuff. I don't have weapons. I don't have guns. I don't need them. Let's continue on. The houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. The word ravish means what you think it means. We would call it. And, and let me let me let me uh, make sure I say this. In the context of how it's used right now. In this passage of scriptures, it's talking about rape. Now, ravish does not always mean that somebody has been raped. And we're going to look at that. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, or the Iranians. Medes are, uh, Iranians are um, the modern day Medes. Which shall not regard silver... And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You're not going to be able to give them any money. I got American dollars. I got gold. We don't want it. And you see that already being said. Uh, Iran don't want our money. For real, they don't care. They take it so they can get their, um, get their gold because they're going to fulfill Bible prophecy. But when it all comes down, they're coming for America, which is mystery of Babylon. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. So the young, you, know, you got the young children, that you, you know, adolescent men, you know, say handsome fellas or whatever, they're going to be dashed to pieces too. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. You get you pregnant, they're going to kill the child in your stomach right there. Their eyes shall not spare children. They're going to kill everybody. Not just kill them. They're going to murder them with maliciousness. Not just regular murder. They just, just, just something that you don't want to go through. The stuff you see in the movies. The stuff they had. I don't know if you did some of the research. Um, or you know about this. But like during the wars and everything. When the um, soldiers would come in. And they would find the women. They would. That, that's nothing compared to what's what's going to come. And I don't want you to be a part of that. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 through 1, 2, and 3. 1 through 3. <laughs> verses 1 through 3. If I say verses 1, 2, and 3, because it just sounds funny. Verses 1, Zechariah. Zechariah 14, verses 1 through 3. <laughs> Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. What do you see again? The women being ravished. Now let's look up the word ravish. Ravish means to seize and carry away by 
violence. To have carnal knowledge of a woman by force and against her consent. Right. To bear away with joy or delight. To delight to ecstasy. To transport. So the word ravish doesn't completely mean rape. It deals with the intent of the heart. I can ravish my wife and it'd be godly. But if I'm out here going to ravish another woman, oh, 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 I got some problems. If your husband is ravishing you, he can do that. As long as he ain't doing nothing crazy that you ain't comfortable with or whatever. Well, if a man knocks on the door, if it's somebody else coming to take something that's not theirs, that's ungodly. Let's look at a few, a few examples. We want to go to Proverbs chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15 through 20. Drink waters out of thy own cistern. Now the context you're going to see is dealing with what we call sex. Yes. It's dealing with the physical pleasure of sex. But he's speaking it in a poetic parable type of form. Drink waters out of thy own cistern. Enjoy your own water. You know, Enjoy your own wife. Enjoy your own husband. And, then, and here he's talking about enjoying his own woman. And running waters out of thine own well. You know. Lust, where does it come from? Comes from deep down in the stomach. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You get that feeling of lust. Right here and be burning. And it, be, it builds up. But when it's, when, it's in, when it's in Christ. And you are married and you are doing these things. When you... Have sex with your husband or wife is like water. It's, it's, you know, you drink it from the well. You can drink from it. You are going deep down in there, you know, getting that water and enjoying it. Drink it from your own cisterns. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad in rivers of waters in the streets. I mean, <laughs> it's speaking for itself in your own house. You know, hey, hand your thing, do your thing. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. The fountains of what? Your waters. Climax, think about that. And rivers of waters in the streets. You may be saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. Water, let the waters, let the rivers of waters be in the streets. The Bible says that, that we are the temple. So if we are the temple of God and we are all fitted together to make up the body of Christ. If you are joined with your husband and wife, you are one. So now you get it. Hopefully you do. The waters are flowing when y'all coming together in her streets or his streets. Because y'all are part of the holy Jerusalem if you're born again. Let thy fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. So we know the context is talking about sex. Enjoy your wife. Enjoy your husband. Of your youth. And why you, you, know, you still got it. Because at a certain age, the drive just ain't there. It's just not there. It just, you know, it happens. I believe it's because, you know, the fall of the state that we are in. Because sex itself is spiritual. Sex itself is spiritual. That's why it's so powerful. Just like music is spiritual. Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant robe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Dealing with sex. And be thou ravished always with her love. Now, he just used the word ravish. Does that mean that 
um, the woman's love was was raping him? No. No. She just her love took him to places that he had never been before. Y'all know some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all that's married, you know what I'm talking about. And I mean, let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real. You done did some things you ain't had no business with. You were like, oh, you know, you was in the body, out the body. Why? Because sex isn't just something physical. It's deeper than that. It's spiritual. That's why it's so powerful. That's why the Holly, that's why Hollywood and all these other pe people that are in these wicked organizations, they do these sex, um, sex ritual magic. All this, all this crazy, so these sexual rituals and stuff like that. Because there's power in it. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? So in one place it says, be ravished. Always with your wife, your wife's love, and then in the other end, it says, "Why you want to be ravished with a, a, a woman, a strange woman? You want to be, you want to be ravished with love that you don't know. You don't want that. So that's showing you that um, the word ravish can be used two different, two different ways. I can do a whole study on that." Um, dealing with um, different emotions uh, like lust and stuff like that. Um, Lord willing, you know, I, I cover all that because people don't have a proper understanding of the emotions and the feelings that we have, and they think that's oh, I feel this way. Something is bad. Or I feel anger. I can't be angry. God gets angry. You're made in the image of God. It's just a matter of how you use. That emotion, that energy, as they as they say, um, and the Bible tells us to don't be angry without a cause, and also tells us to don't let the sun go down on your wrath or your anger. So now we want to go to the book of Daniel, chapter two, starting at verse number forty. Going down to verse number 43. And I want to show you not only all the things that we have said, not only will those things be going on, but there's going to be something even worse. You may be saying, like, how can it be worse than that? I'm going to go ahead and show you or tell you. And this, this, like I said, it's applies to both uh, women and men, but I'm addressing the women mostly. You know how you watch the movies with the aliens and stuff? Different alien movies and the aliens. They be looking all fly. They look good. And then, they, then with the women, if it's, a, if it's a woman, she's always trying to sleep with somebody, sleep with a man, so she can procreate and give birth to a new race. She need that. She need that seed, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, it's 23 and 23, right? 23 and 23, 46 chromosomes. So you get half and half. So if you have a alien, which we know what aliens are, and then you have uh, mankind, that's 23 from the alien, the devils, and 23 from the man and woman, and they're coming together. And then they making something that wasn't supposed to exist in the first place. Hmm. What, what? That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Let me think for a minute. Maybe, maybe it'll come back to y'all. <laughs> so, that's how bad it's going to be. What was going on back then, it's going to be going on again, but it's going to be worse. The alien movies you see with the, the aliens are trying to procreate with with mankind. Those are, those aren't just movies. It's conditioning the people's minds so when the aliens do arrive, then they will accept them because these creatures they ain't gonna be ugly. They're not gonna present themselves as ugly. They're gonna be some beautiful creatures on the outside, but inwardly, oh my God, they're gonna be ugly. But they are ugly. 
So it's not going to be hard for them to get mankind to do these things, whatever, because mankind is already conditioned for it. They have empathy for these um, these creatures that are coming. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Potter's clay is always throughout the scriptures a reference to mankind. So if you have clay and iron mixing themselves and it's telling us that the iron is, uh, is the strength of it, but the clay is the weakness of it, and then they won't be able to come together um, because they're not supposed to mix. It says again, And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Why? Wow, the mind is going to be divided. It's going to be just utter confusion. Because the two seeds are going to mix and not supposed to mix. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. The spiritual beings, their, their seed is going to overpower the seed of, of, of man. So the will of man is going to want to is, is going to be in these in these in these uh, new creations when they when they come together, and they're gonna they're gonna want the the will of man is gonna want to do the thing of God because that twenty three percent, not twenty three percent, but that twenty uh, that fifty percent that's that's man, that's made in the image of God, and then that other fifty percent, the other twenty three is gonna want to do the what the, the the seed of the devil is, which is pretty much what it is. The devils when they manifest them, manifest themselves in the flesh, literally. So the iron is going to overpower the will of man, because the will of man that's going to be in these um, modern day nephilims. He, I mean, he he ain't gonna know what to do. Confusion. He gonna to want to do the right thing, but he can't, because he does. He's not supposed to exist in the first place. Um, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. So you got the higher level devils and everything, they're going to be the strength of it. Then you're going to have the, the mix, the mix, the mixed seed. That's what's gonna bring it down. Cause the toes, if your toes messed up, the whole thing gonna come down. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. People try to get around that, but you can't, you can't, you have to force your way out of that to fit what you want to fit. I mean, it clearly says what it says. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, which is the iron, because it was spoken of first, shall mingle themselves, so these are little entities, themselves, with the seed of men, which is the miry clay, that we can't confirm with scriptures. What is the seed of men? The seed of men is sperm, the semen. That's the seed of man. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So, during this time period, you're going to have this. 
you're not only going to be ravished by the Medes and all these different countries and stuff and they're wicked men but then these demonic entities they're going to be manifested in the flesh and then they're, they're going to have their way too look at Greek mythology they, the gods were always trying to sleep with the sleep with the women and stuff the earth women it's all throughout history it's all throughout the movies if you think about it all the uh, X-Men movies um, um, the Marvel and Capcom movies Thor uh, Thor sleeping with the earth fall, I think he falls in love with the earthly woman if I'm not mistaken <laughs> it just make it entertaining but if you watch it and you discern it from a spiritual standpoint then you will see what they really perpetrating why because they have to condition the people so when it does happen oh the gods have come these beautiful gods have come to save us and I, ch I choose you oh he chose me he gonna have his way with you and he you know because he want he wants you to want children he want more children because his children are gonna be a reflection of him in the same way a man wants children. Why? Because those children are made in his image. So if you want to be around and get done in by aliens, <laughs> keep on doing what you're doing. Refuse to go before God and humble yourself and ask him to give you the gift of salvation. And the very words that you're listening to right now, you're going to go through. But let's look at the word mingle, because it not only is meaning uh, or dealing with the physical mingling, but it's also talking about the spiritual meaning. I mean, uh, not only the physical mingling, but also the spiritual mingling too. Because remember, it is God who put the spirit in man. So Satan wants to mingle his spirit that is evil and wicked with the spirit of man that is the will of God to do his will. Which is why the spirit goes back to God after um, a person dies. You lose it, you break the spirit of a person, I mean, I mean, it's all type of all type of trouble. Because that spirit, the spirit of God is the spirit of life, the spirit to continue to push forward. You continue to push forward, you know, there's always hope. That's why the Bible tells us that a, a person that has a um, contrite spirit, broken heart, broken heart, contrite spirit. The spirit has to be broken. Why? Because the spirit is a stronghold. God made the spirit of man, so he knows what the spirit consists of. He know he knows that man's gonna do 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 his thing. Man's gonna continue to push forward, and um, you know just accomplish different things. Why? Because that's how man was created, created in the image of God. Remember in the book of Genesis that Jesus said, which is another um, another coming of Christ. Just thought about that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, when he came, when he came down, he said, "Nothing shall stop them from what they have imagined. Nothing was going to stop man except except God Himself. Why? Because of the spirit of the spirit of man that God put into man to go forth and to get things done." So the word mingle means to mix, to blend, to unite in one body. The word says when people when two get married, two become one. Not only we not even talking about two becoming one and giving and um, bringing forth a child, but we're talking about when they are married, they become one. So. New world order, one religion, one, one government, one currency, you know, all these different things, one body collectively. So not only do you have the, uh, on, a, on a smaller level with the, um, not really a smaller level, but compared to the whole scope of things, um, the aliens mingling themselves with the seed of man, but 
they themselves mingling spiritually with the with men. Coming together as one. To mix or blend without order or promiscuously. To contaminate, to render impure, to debase by mixture, to confuse, to be mixed, to be united with. So all these definitions encompass the rulership, the final kingdom of Satan on all aspects. Because we know he's going to mix in everything, you know he's going to blend everything. He's going to unite all the people into one body. He's going to mix it or blend it without order. He doesn't want order. <laughs> or promiscuously. He's going to contaminate. He's going to contaminate the seed of God. Because ultimately the seed comes forth from God. Because God, God made all that. So, if this is what you want to go through, then that's what you're going to get. To all my women, I love y'all. And I hope for the best for each and every one of you in Christ. To all my men out there, my brothers, I love y'all too. Because you don't want to go through that either. You don't want to witness that. Who does? You got some things to think about. You got some examining to do. Cause you may be just saying, well, I'm good. Just, just, you know, I just wait till later and see how it plays out. It's gonna be too late then. Examine yourself. All of us. But um, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, truth is not debated, it is declared. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing And no, no, you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked Something because you are lukewarm and neither go Jesus said that he would spit you out of his mouth Stop playing church We become something else, something worse, something more like the world Where is the church? We become something else, neither hot nor cold but Jesus said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich, clothed in white raiment to hide the shame of your nakedness. So then because you are Jesus said that he would spit you out of his mouth Stop playing church We become something else, something worse, something more like the world Where 
You say you a Christian, living yeah. like a child to hell. You a Christian, go to church, say the sinner's prayer. You a Christian, stay getting high, getting thrown. Yeah, Monday through Saturday, anything go. Yeah, caught up in the world and left your first love. Jesus died in your place, he shed his precious blood. But you gotta be seen, Pastor Apostle. Wake up, church, time to go and preach the gospel. you are